Hey guys, in this video, I will talk about roles based permissions for your database and we'll demonstrate how you can configure permissions for various roles to restrict access to your data. To start off, let me show you the setup that I have. First of all, uh, there is a user and uh, that user is me, mark at backendless.com. There is also one custom role that I created and you can see it if you go to users, security roles, and uh, this is where you will see a list of all the built-in roles. I also created one custom role called guest user. At this point, that role is allowed to do everything in the application and we will be trimming down access just to see how that impacts the ability for the users to work with the data. The user that I have, uh, specifically in the users table. It is uh, a part of that role. So if you select the user and click on the user roles link, you'll see that that role, uh, the guest user role is assigned to that specific user. By the way, this is a quite convenient interface. If you, if you need to assign custom roles to the users of your application, you can do it right from this interface. There is also API that you can use from cloud code to make the assignments of roles to the users. But anyway, so this is the setup. I have a user and that user belongs to the guest user role. I'm going to be working with this table that is called film. It contains about, uh, well, roughly 2000 objects. All of these objects are just various movies with information about it, but that's really irrelevant for the purpose of this video. First of all, uh, let's just see what that user can do out of the box. And uh, for this, I'm going to switch to, uh, well, I'm switching to the REST console interface and I'm already logged in as this specific user. If you're not familiar with login, uh, you need to use the user login uh, link right in the REST console. And then when you do this and, you, and log in as a particular user, then any API calls made through this REST console are going to be made on, the, on behalf of that user. In other words, they will have that user identity. So right now, let me just uh, do get, which is basically fetching the objects from this uh, table. And as you can see, all of the objects come back. Now let's start making some changes with the permissions. Number one, uh, we could just switch to the users security roles here, selecting guest user, we can just make the changes that will be of a global nature. So for example, if I want, if I don't want guest users to make any changes in the, uh, in the database, specifically, if I don't want guest users to create new objects, then I can deny that permission. Likewise, if I don't want them to update objects or remove objects, then I can make those assignments. And these assignments of the permissions apply to all data tables that I have in my application. So if it is a guest user, we don't want them to do pretty much anything except for being able to find data. Uh, so with this, with these changes in place, if we go back to the database and take a look at the permissions, then uh, as you can see, this is my, this is the user that I have, and it belongs to the authenticated user and guest user. And these are the effective permissions of that user. So for the roles, if I select once again, the role roles permissions tab, then you will see for the guest user, all of these permissions are going to be inherited globally. And at this point, find is allowed. Therefore, if I go to rest console and then execute get, you can see that I can still get the data. However, if I select any one of these objects and let's select the first one, copy it here and let's just change the rental rate, whatever it means to 599. And if I were to make a change to this object by updating it in the database, which will be the put request. If I click put, you see that I get a message saying the user has no permission to update entity. And notice that I did not have to make any special assignments of the permissions to that user specifically. I'm working with the role that uh, that user belongs to, meaning that if you have multiple users, you can just make, and they all belong to a particular role, you can just make changes to that role uh, and it will apply the, those changes to all the tables. Now, let's say if we want to override it for the film table, uh, let's go back to permissions and select roles permissions. Let's say uh, for guest user, we want to allow updates. Whatever the reason is, let's just say that this is going to be our policy. Guest users can update film uh, table. Now, if I go back to REST console, and then we still have this object in memory, if I make the put request, 
Now it is updated and as you can see the rental rate is $5.99 and that happens only because I granted update permission for the guest user role for that specific table. If we were to pick any other table, so let me switch to roles permission and let's just take table inventory and you will see that for the guest user update is not there and fine so in other words whenever you see all gray it is inherited from one level above but for film then this is uh this is how we modified it where they can do the update if you want to revert it back to the inherited state just click this reset permissions uh icon and it resets it resets it to the original state so using this combination of permissions at the global level and at the table level you can actually control who can do what and you can do it at the roles level which is really the way that back analyst prescribes it uh, in the in another video we reviewed the user permissions where you can control permissions at the user level but the roles based permission permissions is really the way to go